Hey Trinity Anglican Youth and Youth Families, Pastor Kyle here again in week two of these crazy coronavirus closures and, and this week we're under a stay at home order. And if you're like me, uh, kind of extroverted, you are getting sick of this, you're getting frustrated, you're getting a little stir crazy. And so I, I feel for you guys, I'm getting a little bored at home. And so I just wanted to make sure I named a few reminders for you all, ways for you guys to stay connected. First, I'm going to put out a video like this every week. So if you're just looking for an encouraging word, a message, uh, just a way to stay connected with your youth pastor, I'm going to put out this video each week for you guys to watch uh, on the weekends with your family or, or by yourself uh, if you have access to YouTube on a, a phone or a laptop. Uh, so just a way weekly to stay connected to the Word of God and to each other. And then secondly, I uh, think every leader or every small group has already made an effort to reach out and plan some online meetings. And so either you've already met with your leaders or you're about to meet with your leaders. And I just really encourage you, make that a priority, make that a, an opportunity that you avail yourself to and, and pursue, because your leaders love you, they care about you, they wanna stay connected with you. Uh, third, we've got our lunch on Wednesdays at noon. And this uh, first one this past week was awesome. It was so great to see so many of you and to have a great Bible study. So we're going to do that every week for the foreseeable future on Wednesdays at noon. And uh, your parents have that Zoom link, but I can also text it out to you if you need it. We'd love to see you for lunch on Wednesdays. And then uh, finally, if you just want to connect with your leaders, want to connect with me, please reach out. We uh, would love to take a phone call with you. We would love to connect over a video chat. Uh, we just want to be caring for you praying for you, being available to you. So if you're feeling like me, feeling a little stir crazy, feeling a little isolated, uh, please reach out. We want to be in contact with you. We want you to feel connected. We want you to feel cared for. So all that being said, uh, I just wanted to bring another, another encouraging word to you all this week from a passage that's really been an encouragement to me. And that passage is Hebrews 12. And I just... Uh, this Thursday had a, a Zoom call with the young adults of our church, and I asked the young adults to bring a passage of scripture that has been deeply encouraging to them, and one of them brought Hebrews 12, and it was just a sweet reminder to me uh, of a, a passage that encourages me, and so I hope to encourage you with three quick ideas. So if you have your Bibles, feel free as a family to, to pull those out. I'm going to read the passage this week together. So. Hebrews 12, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I love this passage. It is deeply encouraging to me because it's a reminder that we're not alone, a reminder that we, we can look to Jesus, a reminder of, of what our life goal, our purpose is in this language of a, a race. And so really quickly, three, three points I just want to pull out this passage. One, the spiritual life. Life with God is like a race. There's a metaphor here that, that life with God is like a race. Two, we're not alone in that race. We're surrounded by encouragers and teammates cheering us on. And three, the whole point of the race is to be with God. The prize is Jesus himself. So let's really quickly look at each of those in turn. First of all, the author of Hebrews says, uh, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. He's using a metaphor here to talk about our life with God, to talk about our spiritual life and say that it is like a race. And if you've ever been a part of uh, track and field or cross country, you know that, that running is challenging. It's hard. Uh, a lot of us hate running because it is such a challenging form of exercise. And, and race, a race requires endurance. It requires grit. It requires training. And so there's this metaphor here that the spiritual life is not always easy. Life is not always easy. We know that really clearly in this season. 
in the midst of all these closures in our life and our, our, all our rhythms being turned upside down, we recognize that life is not always easy. Life with God is not always easy. Sometimes there are questions and challenges that require endurance, that require some grit, require a big measure of faith. And so the challenge here is for us to remember that we are on a race, that there are some, some challenges and some endurance that is needed from us as we move forward. And so the, the author encourages us, lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so closely. You guys know this, that when you go to run a race, you're not going to keep your backpack on. You're not going to keep your, your phone and all these other things in your pockets. When you run a race, if you're, especially if you're on a cross-country team or a track team, you're wearing shorts and, and, a, and a, you know, a singlet or something for your top, and you're, you're ready to go. You're, you're taking every weight off that you can to be as fast as possible so that you can run the race efficiently. You can run it with all your strength. And so we're being encouraged here as we're pursuing God in this life, this, this spiritual race. Let's not just keep weights on our backs. Let's not keep the sins that tangle up our feet and, and cling to us from stopping us running this race. So what are the things, the weights in our lives? What are the, the sins that cling to us that keep us from running with full uh, uh, endurance, full vigor, towards God, especially in this season. Maybe that for you is a little bit of apathy. Maybe you're a little bored in this season and pursuing God in, in scripture or in prayer feels a little boring or a little hard to engage because you're already doing so much work alone for school or, or being alone so much that doing more spiritual disciplines on your own, maybe that's just unappealing and challenging. I hear that. Maybe that's a weight in your life that you need to, to press through. Maybe there's a, an idol in your heart, the sin piece. Maybe you, you love something in your life so much that it's getting in the way of being with God. Maybe you've been spending a load of time on social media or the internet or on video games or, or something that maybe it's not bad in and of itself, but the way that we prioritize it, it becomes an obstacle on our race. It becomes a distraction. It becomes something that holds us back from pursuing God with the kind of love, the kind of energy, the kind of excitement that he wants us to. What does that look like in your life today? What are the, the weights and the sins that cling to you that stop you from seeking God? I encourage you, throw those off. Seek God in this season. We're being given an opportunity during all these closures, during the stay-at-home order, to really pursue God in a new way. What does it look like to run this race with excitement? But that's not the only thing in this passage. It's not just, you're running, run hard. There's some encouragement here that I want to give you. If we think of our life with God as a race to run, it's not a competitive race. I'm not running against you or against my neighbor to beat them. We're a team and we're running together. In verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. That's the encouragement for why we should throw off the weights, why we should throw off the sin that clings to us. Because we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. In the previous chapter, the author of Hebrews was talking all about these Old Testament saints that believed in God and it was counted them as righteousness. He's talking about all these people in heaven today who are cheering you on. That the church is not just uh, Trinity Anglican on Sunday morning. The church is not just Christians in America. The church is not just Christians globally. The church is everyone who has put their faith in God, put their faith in Jesus Christ in all times, in all places. And so right now, there's a great cloud of witnesses in heaven cheering you on, wanting you to get to the throne room of grace with them in heaven. They're cheering you on. And not only are there saints in heaven cheering you on, praying for you, hoping that you continue to press into Jesus, but your brothers and sisters here around you, your leaders, your, your friends in your small group, your parents, maybe there's an aunt or an uncle. Who are those spiritual encouragers that are running the race with you? We want to be available to you. We want to cheer you on. When I was on the track team in high school, my favorite event to watch 
was the 4x400 relay. It's a, a, usually the last event of every track meet, and it is so fun to get your whole team around the fence so that as your teammates are running this relay around the track, you get to cheer for them. And it's, you are with them. You are for them. You're not in that one event, but you want them to win. You want them to succeed. You want them to race hard. How can we cheer you on? Who's that leader you need to reach out to this week to cheer you on, to encourage you? Who's that friend in your small group or that friend in, in school that's a, a Christian brother or sister that can encourage you? There are people racing with you, encouraging you, cheering you on. Who do you need to reach out to this week? We're available to you. But then finally, this last piece of our passage, what's the prize? What do we need to keep our eyes on as we're running this race? Why are we racing it? And here in verse 2, looking to Jesus. What should we keep our eyes on? We should keep our eyes on Jesus. Why? He is the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Why did Jesus come to earth and run his own race? Why did Jesus come to earth and go to the cross on our behalf? Was it to be with the Father in heaven? No, Jesus already had that. So why did Jesus come? What was the joy? What was the prize set before Jesus on his race? It was you and me. You and me, we are God's prize. Jesus ran his race. Jesus endured the cross, endured death on our behalf to have you and me so that he could give his love to us freely so that we could be with him in his perfect holiness and righteousness, so that we could be in his home, that we could be in the new heavens and the new earth, delighting in the presence of God. What is the prize at the end of this race? It's that we get to be with God. You are God's joy. You are God's delight. God wants you, and God is your prize. The good news of Scripture, the good news of the gospel is not that God tolerates us, not that he has simply taken away the penalty of sin, but that God delights in us. God loves you. That's why we pray our Father. He loves you like a father and, and better than any father we've ever experienced. The good news of the gospel is that this prize, the race we're running, is for Jesus, is to have the presence of God in our lives. So my encouragement to you this week, as we are not really outside running, maybe you're running by yourself for some exercise, but while we are at home, while we're in this, uh, this lockdown, so to speak, or this stay-at-home order, how are you running the race? Are you throwing off weights? Are you throwing off sins that are hampering you? Are you reaching out to those encouragers, those cheerleaders, those, those people who can encourage you and push you on to greater and better things? And are you keeping your eyes on the prize? That it's not just a, 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 that you get out of hell, that you get out of punishment, but that you get to be with God, that Jesus delights in you. You are Jesus' joy. Are we keeping our eyes on the prize this week? I encourage you, seek God while you're in this uh, stay-at-home order. Pursue him. He loves you. He wants to meet with you. Your leaders want to encourage you on that race. They want to encourage you and push you forward. So do something new this week. Do whatever you need to do to, to throw off some weights, to spend some more time with God in prayer and in scripture, or, or do a family devotional with your family. I encourage you, run the race with endurance because there is an incredible prize awaiting us. Jesus himself. Let me pray for you guys. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the teenagers of Trinity Anglican Church. I'm so blessed to know them, so blessed to have them in my life. And I just pray that we would all remain connected to one another. We would remain encouraged despite these uh, really bizarre circumstances. I pray for health for them and their families. And I just pray they would be encouraged this week that this wouldn't be a time of apathy, of boredom, of, of distancing ourselves from God, from you, God, but that this would be a time, an opportunity to draw nearer to you, to run with greater endurance, 
greater vigor, greater excitement, because you are our prize, God. We love you, and we thank you so much for loving us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you guys next week.